viewers, welcome to another edition of the Wine Personality Profile Series. This is a program that features personalities we believe are making changes in the industry for the mine and petroleum industry across West Africa and beyond. Today we are privileged to have Associate Professor Kwame Wolfe from the Missouri University of Science and Technology, a ruler in the USA. Welcome, Prof. And Thank we you. are happy to have you here. Thank today. you. Well, um, we want to know a bit about your background, who you are, and why mine in the first place. Okay. Well, Kwame um, Wolfe, as, as you said, um, I was mainly raised in Takrade, so I went to St. John's and it was sometime during my time in St. John's that I got to know, um, actually a classmate of mine had a brother at the then school of mine, and so I met a guy and the guy was telling, telling us about um, mining and you know, the availability of jobs and how much money people were making. And so. I was one of the few that had, I think I got hooked very early. And I think it was form three or form four. During all of the time, I decided I wanted to do mining. And of course, over the years, I learned. And the more I got to know, the more I liked it. So I, I stuck around. <laughs> um, what are some of the important highlights of your career to date? I'd say there have been a, big, a few you know, major things and decision points. Uh, definitely, I think, getting to work with uh, Professor Timmy um, for my BS project work was very um, influential because through Timmy, um, I was introduced to Professor Frimpong, who mm -hmm. agreed to be my PhD advisor. So that was, that was also good. Um, I think my time in industry, even though it was short after the PhD, was, was influential in the way I approach my teaching and research now. And um, coming back to the University of Missouri, University of Science and Technology, um, making it through tenure, and, yeah, those would be the, I would say, the highlights. Well, you've, you've come a long way, especially in research. What, what's been your motivating factor? What really inspires you? I, as a person of faith, I think, above all, my faith instructs and inspires everything I do. I've always tried to do the best I can with you know, everything, believing, uh, even though I am not perfect, but believing that whatever I'm doing, I should do it to the glory of God. So as much as possible, I try to do the best I can. Um, so, so as far as inspiration goes, I think my faith is number one, and also being driven to, to be the best I can be. I may not be the best in everything, but at least I can judge that for my own capacities. Yeah. I've done the best I can be, and that, that's been a, a good guide. And then the good thing is um, you've been in academia for close to a decade. Um, not in this part of the world, I mean, in the US, where we, we can say there are very good examples to show. What, what do you think is really lacking? I mean, you, you, you've been back in Ghana for some two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. You've been today. You knew where it all started. What do you think is really lacking as far as academia is concerned? The training of professionals. Um, you know, I have hired myself for um, for research assistants, graduates from from the uni. I've also interacted with a lot of people, not only even from UMAC but also from the other universities in Ghana. Who either want to come to university at our place, postgraduate studies at our place, yeah. or not, um, or or want help and pointers to go elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and I still think first, let me say that the quality of the graduates, especially their math and fundamental preparation, is is still great yeah. um, compared to our students. And I don't actually think all of this is actually the fault of the universities. Part of it is cultural. Part of it is the strength of the partnership between the industry and the university yeah. in discharging that responsibility to train the next generation of engineers. There's nothing here. Yeah, exactly. So what, what I find that is troubling is, for instance, you know, you compare that to our students. When our students go on attachment or internship, the industry really treats them as engineers. They, of course, they will not give them feasibility studies to do, but they will give them 
task that they expect engineers yeah. to do and mentor them to do that. Yeah. And that process means the day they graduate, it's not like they are making a big jump from a student engineer to a graduate engineer. Yeah. It's a gradual step. And it seems like here, uh, at least my experience and talking to people, you go on attachment and you are not tasked to do anything mm -hmm. meaningful. So the day you graduate, there's just such a big gap between you and the other thing that I think is a big differentiator is you find that our students in the United States actually have worked a lot, have had jobs. It may not be professional engineering jobs, but they have had um, a job at McDonald's. They have had so that like a bit of experience. Correct. It's already there by the time they graduate. They have reported yeah. to a boss before. They yeah. know what it means to show yeah. up on time. Yeah. The consequences of not showing up on time. Uh, deadlines, yeah. those things have been inculcated in them because they've been working since they were 14, 16. Yeah. Um, whereas that seems to be lacking a bit here. Um, and of course, you can talk about the obvious things like having better labs yeah. and better facilities um, as well. Now you're to your work at the um, Commission, the US Securities Exchange uh, Commission. I, I think it's a very, it's, it should be one of your most important highlights actually. Um, looking at that and uh, vis-a-vis the state of the industry now in West Africa, by way of professionalism, are we there yet? Are we getting the, are we anywhere near the threshold? You know, I, generally, so long as we are running mines and the mines are profitable mines, um, we are, we are doing okay. Yeah. I think the, uh, systemic issues generally operating in, in the environment, um, the, the regulators you deal with or even generally within the mind because you are placed in this system there are things that are not only industry specific but systemic in the whole economy the, the corruption, the, the attitude people have to work, timeliness for example these are issues that we can improve on um, and also I think uh, something that of course, I'm not in the system all the time, but from my vintage point, I see is a lot of this, um, um, you know, we have lots of expatriate labor um, in the country, as well as people from outside West Africa, uh, in, in West Africa operating. And part of it, it seems like in some companies, there's a glass ceiling yeah. for local talent yeah. to get. and those issues, some of them I think are workplace culture and expectations that people have of uh, what people should be before they get to those senior management yeah. positions. We need to overcome those so that mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. show that we can we can manage the whole industry exactly. and successfully mm -hmm. do that throughout, mm -hmm. throughout the, the industry. Sustainability of the mining industry. You've, you've done um, a bit of work, more work done in modeling planning, etc. What do you think is, to you, I mean, your approach to sustainability of the industry? Well, so, so broadly defined, we would say, you know, it's sustainable, at least to, to, the, to the broader community, mm -hmm. if we mine in a manner that does not um, rob future generations of the ability to do their own, support themselves. Yeah. Um, but linked to that, really is also the sustainability of the current operation because if the operation goes bankrupt for example you are likely to not discharge all your environmental liabilities and so as a professional one of the things i can do is to ensure that when i do work i put forth my best work to ensure that my company uh, makes profit but in doing that i should do it in a manner that ensures the protection of the ecosystem ensures that the uh, impact on the society is minimized um, and, and I think um, especially in my research trying to answer some of the difficult questions on why some things uh, you know mining has certain impact on, on the ecosystem or how recently some of the things my students and I have been doing relating to the interaction between mines and the communities that host them I think these things help going forward for industry to have a better understanding of why we have conflicts, how to deal with those conflicts, so hopefully we can minimize those conflicts going going forward. And still talking about, we've got some of the 
favorite tools or software you like to work with? Um, no, myself, my favorite tool is the one I'm using right now, right? <laughs> to solve the problem in yeah. front of me. Yeah. Um, but of course, being a mining engineer, it's always fun to be using a mine planning software. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I like doing mine planning or yeah. teaching mine planning. Um, but I, I, I like, actually, I, I think I like programming and building my own code better than anything. And so these days I program in MATLAB. So okay. when I have the chance to, yeah. to code in MATLAB, it's, I don't do that as often because now it's more directing the graduate students to do it and I review. But, but, but I, I, I have fun when I get to do that. Um, to tie in this with your work at the commission, uh, the state of the industry over the years, the standards, are they falling or we are catching up with, with, with the ones out there? I, I don't think it's even, I mean, I, the, the industry as a whole, yeah, the, yes, yes, we, we have a problem, the, yeah. right? We have a problem, uh, as um, you are aware, we discussed this as part of the wine course we just yeah. did in Takwa. Uh, for example, when we hear numbers like on average thirty-two percent of uh, projects, well, uh, project two thirds of projects run over budget, yeah. and on average they run over budget thirty-two percent, and in fact some as much as uh, for for marginal projects averaging seventy-eight or something percent. That's worrying. That says that as engineers, and these are we are talking about projects that we have estimated capital costs at the pre-feasibility, at least pre-feasibility yeah. level, and we are still that much off in our capital cost estimate. So that's something not only in, in Ghana or in West Africa, but generally yeah. as an industry, we need to get a handle on so um, people don't lose confidence in our engineering studies and scientific studies. So if we say, but also um, sometimes people are not actively behaving unethically um, but but they are pressured to produce the cheapest cost design um, and it is always a good thing to to design the cheapest cost operation but it has to be based on real assumptions because if you're making assumptions that cannot be achieved you can get a good number on paper but that number is not achievable in, in reality yeah because we have a close and personal chat with associate professor in welfare from Missouri University um, Roller in the US. Um, we've been talking about professionalism, we've been talking about good ethics, we've been talking about the state of the industry worldwide now. And Prof, um, given the opportunity, what would you want to see being done differently? Um, I think one of the things that frustrates me the most is that these cycles we go through uh, not of the price, commodity price cycles, yeah. those we, we can't control, we can control yeah. but the, the, the part that frustrates me is when commodity prices go up, our cost of production yeah. goes up with it, and so as soon as commodity prices drop, uh, we are struggling yeah. to make money. Uh, and of course, some of it is because marginal projects that were not profitable at lower prices, we bring them on board. And so, if you have a marginal project that needs high prices to be sustainable, you can't do anything about it. But even the high-grade, low-cost operations tend to increase their costs uh, during those things. And I think that's something um, I wish we pay attention to the basics more when times are good, um, so that by paying attention to the basics and making sure our KPIs are still on track, we can keep our overall cost. Yes, we have to still do capital expenditures and the best time to invest in a business is when times are good. So we would bring on additional capital when times are good, but it shouldn't be just because our operating cost at the mine is going up because there are good times and we are not watching uh, where the money is. That, that is an issue and linked to that is at least because I'm at the university, maybe that's why I see that, is when we have these booms and busts, it makes it really difficult, at least in, in the West, to attract young people into yeah. the industry. Because yeah. if you are coming in and seeing no, un no employment for yeah. graduates, you yeah. don't want to be in an industry. No, no way. And even when I try to convince you, oh, you get a job in four years, why do I want to be in an industry that yeah. every seven years or so yeah. lays off its people? So if we can, keep things going at a steady rate, it will be easier to feed young talent into the industry to replace the old, old yeah, ones. Yeah.
Um, and we, we do need that because now it looks like the industry is full of old people and the young guys are not coming here. But that brings me to the next question um, in commodity prices. Is that how it's going to be forever? Are we to expect another big storm? You know, in, in part, I, I think we have to be used to yeah. those, those price cycles. Yeah. But as I said, I think what we can control is how we run the businesses, how we run the mines, um, whether they are in good times or bad times to ensure that we are profitable. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you and I graduated around the time where gold prices were barely at $300 an ounce. Yeah. Um, and so historically, you look at the numbers, it's historically high. Yeah. Even though we are still struggling to operate at these kind of prices, but you compare that to those times. Um, so so the, the point I'm making is, if we can keep our production costs steady, um, and actually even improve efficiency so that we can go after lower grade material and still be able to turn a profit, then we can keep things steady and not be so subject to these volatilities in the prices because our operations are operating at a low, low cost. Um, we're still having a close and personal chat with Prof. Welfare from Missouri, SNT, Rola in the US. Um, I know now almost everybody knows this, but this way it makes our viewers funny and they just laugh it off. Not everybody knows you, but, um, Went around a handheld on that before. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was something about you that would make uh, would surprise our readers? Really? Well, you have just said yeah. it, right? Um, yeah. Uh, you and I went on that trip uh, trying to use a handheld yeah. organ to do this uh, exploration sampling. That was interesting. And you quickly realized that sometimes you have to get down and dirty to get the work done. And, and this is also a good lesson for the young up-and-coming yeah. engineers yeah. that yeah. that experience we had on that attachment we yeah. could have made that define us and say mining is horrible yeah. but in fact looking back i learned a lot of basics yes. about about that I, I always i don't know if you remember that visit to us in Kribwa where we were left in charge of the sample yeah, 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 yeah. and three of us would argue yeah, yeah, yeah. about um, the samples whether we should say it's you know, fine grained or coarse, or, <laughs> but but now I use that to tell my students you're just supposed to make a decision, make a decision yeah, and move exactly. forward, and you don't yeah. have to get it hundred percent right. Yeah. So even though those were it was quote unquote dirty jobs, yeah. they formed our opinions yeah. and, and they shaped yeah. us yeah. for the future, and, and it also helps you understand now when you have guys working for you, you know how to treat them because yeah. you have been there and you know how hard yeah. it is for them. Yeah to work under those circumstances. Um, what was the message you want to give to industry professionals uh, towards their professional development and then the greater part of um, industry sustainability? I, you know, I, I think every day you show up to do your best. Of course, we, we talk about safety all the time and safety is, is something that we should take charge of. But safety relies on all of us doing our part to ensure that things are done in a, in a sustainable manner, things are done safely, um, especially those of us that have been blessed to, to be quote-unquote senior staff or seen as management, we have an, a responsibility to ensure that when we see things um, around the mine, even if you are the newest guy on the block and you see someone running things in, uh, in a manner that is not safe, in a manner that impacts the environment, remember that you are management and management is counting on you to say something, to take remedial action, to ensure that your company doesn't get fined, your company uh, doesn't, the mine doesn't get shut down because of these things. Because it, it always costs a lot more to pay these fines or to be shut down than it would to address it and do it, do it right the first time. So I think our, our professional development, yes, we need to get more education and all that, but it should always translate into the decisions we make at the mine to ensure that our mines are producing safely, uh, the impact on the environment is minimized, and but our shareholders will also return value to our shareholders. And in most cases, it can be done. Because yeah. in most cases, we sat down and did a feasibility study and showed a positive rate of return. Yeah. That's why yeah. we invested in the yeah. project. Yeah. So if we can address the challenges as they come up, we should get close to those 
positive rate of return and our shareholders should should be happy. Um as we've been having a close and personal chat with Prof Welfare from Missouri S N T Rolla in the US. Um as part of the YM industry personality profile series. Rob believes that we need to strive towards our best in everything we do. We also need to um, know that safety relies on all of us. And then also let's try as much as possible to save the environment. And um, Kwame, um, when did you think you were going when it, it all began? <laughs> no, wait, so, so were you looking at coming this far? No, <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I, my own background is very humble. Um, I, I, I remember recently telling someone I, I have gotten farther than I, I thought I would, so if I don't get any further, I'm totally yeah. happy because I used to remember uh, playing soccer, barefoot, uh, <laughs> and um, so, so you know, no, I, 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 I've, it, it exceeds my wildest imagination. Again, it goes to the testimony of doing your best, working hard, and the grace of God, um, people being there at the right time. I've had some very good mentors who have helped shape me, so I, I'm always glad to help a young person coming through because I had lots of people along the way who took the time to encourage me, took the time to to show me the ropes, so to speak. So I'm more than and I think that's something all of us should do. Yeah. Because wherever you are it's because somebody mentored you along exactly. the way. So yeah. you should give back and yeah. I, and when I do get the chance I try to do that uh, for for others. What's the next step? And who knows? <laughs> who knows step by step. I mean being an academic, full professors should be the next yeah. uh, logical step. Um, and, and for now, I just concentrate on developing my research, teaching, and we'll see where it goes. And given the opportunity, I mean, would you want to go for anything else apart from mining? No, actually, mining has been very good to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, I, and, and beyond um, just whatever financial or, yeah. or I, I do enjoy the work I do. Yes. I, I enjoy the research problems, um, and and I'm, I'm totally happy. I do, I don't know. Maybe if I did something else, I would enjoy it. And and personally too, I try to look at what is in front of me yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe that has something to do with it. But I don't know. I think I I wouldn't change the thing. I would I would do it the same way if I had to do it. Yeah, my name is Joy. They say it's always Joy. <laughs> Look, it's been good coming. To talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.